Fashion has always been about how you want to be seen by the world. Who do you want to portray yourself to be? Which is different than who you are. It's about the projection of your identity. Which is why it's a billion dollar industry. Because they think they can sell us ourselves. And truthfully, often we are buying. But now we find ourselves in this global state where we have no one to dress up for besides our mirror. And the question, perhaps for the first time ever, has become, what do we wear when no one is watching? What do we wear when we're dressing for ourselves? And perhaps most importantly, what are we wearing to the apocalypse? Welcome to the first Monday in May. Maybe. Who knows? Time's gotten really relative recently, hasn't it? But no matter what time you're watching at, welcome to the Met Gala. Apocafabulous, armed and dangerous. I'm your host for the evening, Shelton Whimsy, reporting live for the shallow B-rate spectacle. Tonight on the red carpet, we're really raking in the fashion. We've got everything from trash couture to Paris couture coming your way. There's even an outfit that's entirely made out of pasta. As with every Met Gala, many people followed the theme. However, others did not. Who cares? What are the rules anyway? I didn't make them up. Actually, I did make up the rules and the rules were simple. Send me a video or a photo of you in a look and I will edit it into a video. So what you're gonna see tonight is a whole panoply of people from all over the world who decided to celebrate their quarantine by creating fashion for you, which I think is personally amazing. I mean, what else are we doing and who are we getting dressed up for besides ourselves? I made most of this look out of stuff I stole out of my dad's shed. Sorry, dad. Now we're joined here this evening by our special co-chair, Ryan. Now before I introduce Ryan to you, he just wanted me to make sure that you knew that all the PPE that he is wearing in his looks are ones that he wore in the hospital and then took home. No PPEs were harmed in the making of this video. Hello. Hey you. Gal Gadot. Imagine all the people, right? <laughs> Fuck you too. Shelton, how are you? Oh, I am just having such a fabulously glamorous evening. Look at all these celebrities and influencers all dressed to the nines and breathing on their own. Come on, functioning lungs. Let's get respirating. Death drop. Darling, that was a fabulous death drop. But how's your life going? I am living my best life in my brand new outfit from Jean-Paul Gaultier's Panda Mink line. His house out there got me home with the PPE from three different manufacturers. So now it's covering my sexy body instead of my colleagues' frightened faces. <laughs> Speaking of your colleagues, Ryan, as someone who actually works in the healthcare industry, how would you describe your experience with this pandemic so far? Hmm. Three words to describe my experience? Hmm, that's a tough one, but I know the first one will absolutely be warrior. Because our entire country has adopted this rhetoric of heroism to describe healthcare workers so as to mentally prepare themselves to frame our deaths as a necessary sacrifice in the great war against COVID-19, despite the fact that it was mostly preventable. <laughs> oh, number two, or two, I'd have to go with prematurity. Hydroxychloroquine was touted as a risk-free drug and a possible cure-all for COVID. Turns out it actually causes heart attacks in specifically COVID-infected patients. Who knew? Who knew? Oh, and finally, word number three, guess would have to be Oz, because like the fabled wizard, the curtain has finally been pulled back and revealing the unholy matrimony of capitalism and democracy and showing to the whole world that our leaders value money more than they value human lives. Ah! Now Ryan, for those of us who are interested in helping out, what is a good charity that we might be able to donate some of our time or resources towards? If you do happen to have some extra cash, um, my Venmo is, no. <laughs> if you have some extra cash, uh, there is an organization called Direct Relief, uh, which is 
providing um, uh, hospitals and uh, first responders with PPE. My hospital is starting to run out. I know many other hospitals are already have already run out. Um, so that's still something that we're going to need, especially given that we're not the, we're not we're still seeing new new infections. So Direct Relief is a really really great organization that's making sure that people get PPE and that your you know essentials are um, are protected. Right. Oh, sorry. Such a fabulous evening, really. Well, Ryan, we are just so glad to have you here and we are so grateful for the work that you are doing every single day to keep us all safe and healthy. Thank you. We all owe you and your colleagues many fucking drinks and this is over. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts. I'm joined here tonight by esteemed fashion correspondent and all around cultural icon, Lisa on the couch. Hello, Lisa. Shelton, hello, happy Met Gala. So good to see you, so good to see anyone really. I'm joined briefly by my emotional support dog, Shadow. He's deaf and blind and doesn't speak English, but he's been my sole companion for the last six and a half weeks. <laughs> and hello, Shadow, glad to see you are well. How has your quarantine been? Baby, I am living my Oscar the Grouch fantasy. I'm doing all my favorite things. I'm eating, I'm sleeping, I'm day drinking, I'm night drinking. My skin looks incredible from the near constant face masks. I haven't changed my sweatpants in like a fortnight and I also haven't like touched another person since maybe like St. Patrick's Day, which is kind of tough. Well, who knows? Maybe you'll be able to give someone a hug on that holiest of holidays, the 4th of July. Just kidding, fuck that holiday. But hopefully we are gonna be out of quarantine soon. We can all give each other good old hugs. Now, are you ready to judge and provide some commentary on the Met Gala? Do you know how many times I have asked to provide commentary for the Met Gala? And every time they're like, short of a literal apocalypse, absolutely not. <laughs> oh, let's do this thing. Well, when God gives you lemons, find a new God. And or take those lemons and put them in your gin and have a nice cocktail. But since the apocalypse is here and we are the only ones left to judge the Met Gala, let's get to it. Let's go live to Shelton on the red carpet. Thank you, Shelton. The stars are arriving in full force on the red carpet tonight. I missed a few of them for an interview, but here are some of the people who have already gone in. And it looks like our next celebrity is just bounding on that door to get in. Hi, Pixel. Welcome to the Met Gala. Will you give us a little runway show, please? Ooh, now this is the reason we look to the Met Gala every year. This ensemble is serving me theme. And the theme is, you might be scared of this pandemic, honey, but I am not. I am here to give you life and I am here to take it from you. Pixel, darling, is this your first time at the Met Gala? Oh my God, um, it is. Uh, thank you for asking. Um, yeah, so all of the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, celebrities were dead, um, so they asked me to be here. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, you're an A-list celebrity in my heart. Now, tell me, who are you wearing? Um, I actually made it myself. Um, the Joanne fabrics down the street actually got raided, and so the glass was broken open, so I just walked right in. Um, I saw this fabric on the floor. Um, some other one, some other person was trying to grab it, but um, I beat her to death with her baby, so it's all mine. <laughs> Love that, resourceful, thrifty queen. Thanks for stopping by, Pixel. Oh look, it looks like someone else is coming down the red carpet. Now I, I know it's been a while since I've seen another human being, but whatever body of water crab daddy is about to go crawl into, take me with. Oh, hello, Anthony. Is this your first time at the Met Gala? I don't think I've seen you here before. This is my first Met Gala. I've been overlooked in the past. I am so sorry you've been overlooked, but you look amazing. Who are you wearing? It's mine. I hand. I spent about 40 hours hand painting all of the golden crabs on this suit. 
I found the suit on eBay though. I made this suit so that I would have something decent to wear to present myself to Poseidon to ask that he take me with him in the apocalypse because climate change is real, the sea levels are rising, and his territory is going to be expanded soon. Oh, I'm sure Poseidon will love that. You look amazing. Say hi to him for me when you see him. Enjoy your night. Who is this angel stomping down the red carpet wearing actual bark? Are you kidding me? It looks like if you lit this woman on fire, she would burn like a woodwick candle. And bitch, I happily spend $27 on that shit. Oh, Bean, Bean. Oh, hello, darling. So good to see you. Now, is this your first Met Gala? Have I been to the Met Gala before? Why, yes. Last year, I stole the feathers and sold them to peasants. Oh, of course, I forgot you have been here before and that you quite literally did steal feathers and sell them to peasants. Good on you. Now, who are you wearing? She looks familiar. I'm wearing a Carol King West Palm Beach exclusive. Why, birch, white birch. Well, I just love your ingenuity. Way to wear something from Mother Nature. You have a good Met Gala, darling. It looks like famed artist and pole dancer extraordinaire Blaine Petrovi is here today. Let's see if I can get an interview. Blaine, Blaine. I'm busy. I don't have time for your shit. Oh, Blaine. Ah, uh, looks like Blaine doesn't have time for us today. Now, this is a look that I am rather jealous of. This just screams kitchen goods and home wares and making your own food at home because you actually have access to it and you don't live in New York with an oven that doesn't open all the way because for some reason there's a steam pipe exactly where the oven door is. Ugh, I am living for it. I just, it's turning me on a little bit, in fact. Oh, hello. I don't think I've met you before, but you look like quite the tasty treat. Who are you? I'm a dish. Well, a dish you most certainly are. Now, how has your quarantine been? I haven't left the kitchen. <laughs> you and me both. Now enjoy your Met Gala. Oh, baby, is this look toxic. Oh. Oh, it's taking my breath away. Oh, it's like, ooh, I shouldn't, but I want to. I love it, everything about it, the ingenuity, the creativity, the body yaddy yaddy, the cute pink bob, everything about it. It's sexy, it's titillating, it's frightening. I'm into it. Oh, Tiger Darling, it's nice to see you. I put a little something on for you. Now, is this your first Met Gala? Yes, this is my first time at the Met Gala. I'm super excited. Tell me a little bit about what you're wearing. <laughs> As you can see, I love fashion. I'm wearing the late 90s movie Ghost World. And my inspiration for this look was really just getting into the toxicity of technology taking over our earth. And I am one with nostalgia and technology and toxicity. Oh, you are one with toxicity, darling. Just look at you, it's just oozing out of your pores. I love it. You enjoy your evening. Oh, look, it's Sabrina coming down the red carpet. I bet this outfit has a name. I call it Pillow Queen Quarantine because these days I'm just laying on the bed and taking it. You and me both, sister. Essentially, I'm spending so much time here anyways that I figured it would be the perfect place to be. Um, so I have completely covered the walls of my bedroom um, with wonderful fabric. This garment was designed by um, Ennui and Desperation, um, who really do um, their best work during a pandemic, I find. I am living for this blanket for a moment. Are you kidding me? Depression, absolutely one of my favorite designers. Darling, what's your favorite part about this monumentous look? The best thing about this entire outfit is that it really helps with paparazzi because no one can actually enter your bedroom because the dress fills it. Also, that helps with social distancing and also not getting laid. Well, if you can't get laid, make sure you get some wood. I've been tree trimming today. Oh, I'm a bad boy. That's right, Mother Nature. I'm, I'm bad. I'm so bad. 
Wow, Beatrix BB is here. She's not allowed to give us an interview because her agents told her not to, but she did release a statement saying she's wearing custom comb de garbage made out of reclaimed scraps of heirloom denim mask materials and shrapnel from the outside world. She paired it with a boyfriend boot because she recently ate him not for food, just for fun and simple daytime 24 karat gold jewelry. The makeup is fresh, natural, light drag. Now this look is really meant for anybody who understands that the three best parts of any human body are the décolletage, a single elbow, and just an outline of a booty. What I love about this look is that it looks like a fighting costume one might find in a game like Tekken. Oh, Haley, darling, it's lovely to see you. Now, is this your first time at the Met Gala? This is my first time being invited, yes. Love it, love what you've done with the look. Oh, this old thing? I found it in a trash heap outside of the remnants of Disneyland. I wanted to wear the hopes and dreams of yesteryear as a reminder of what not to do in the future. Well, I'm sure we will all have tried to have learned from that lesson somehow. Who knows? Anyway, enjoy your evening, darling. Shelton, there is no way that this look is not making it on my best dress list. Are you kidding me? The warmth, the comfort, the stuffed emoji unicorn. This outfit screams, I'm tired, both physically and emotionally. I love it. And I love how she's going full gaga, giving us three different reveals in one outfit. That's right, strut your stuff, Michelle Joni. And it's the queen of color herself, Michelle Joni. Now, Michelle, is this your first Met Gala? I threw the Metro Gala last year at Union Square subway station and it was fabulous. I don't know how this compares, let's see. Well, let's hope this Met Gala is more entertaining than the L train on a Saturday night. Am I right? Though, honestly, really, I just, I miss commuting in New York. Now, tell me a little bit about your look. Oh, I'm wearing sleep couture. And what was your concept behind this? My concept is I'm tired and I want to go back to bed. You and me both, sister. Now you get a nap, Michelle Joni, and we'll see you soon. Oh, now these two? This is clearly a power couple for the evening. And not just because they arrived on a motorcycle with skulls on it, although that would give them immediate authority over me because I'm kind of a wimp. <laughs> Take my jewelry! <laughs> I'm just kidding. But really, if you need something, you, you, can, <laughs> you can just have it. Um, I... If I had any jewelry to give, I would certainly give it to them. They make better use of it, I'm sure. And this bike, that saw, that bag full of apocalypse supplies, the skulls, I love every single inch of it. And oh my god, what is that? Who left a glove? Who left a glove? Now it's everyone's favorite power couple, Larissa and Jeffrey. Now is this your first time at the Met Gala? Is this our first time at the Met Gala? Well, we may have been on the other side of the flash. You may call us the paparazzi, but not anymore, baby. We're the main event. Oh, how interesting, the paparazzi. I love them. Now, who are you wearing? Who are we wearing? Agatha, Mabel, Ruth. Mr. Conrad. I don't remember his name. We meet so many people. You do meet so many people, I'm sure. Now, do you have any advice for us living through the apocalypse? Drink more champagne. I'm already drinking quite a lot of champagne. Any other advice besides that? Eat the rich. I would absolutely love to have a rich person burger, let me tell you. 
Any other parting words for us? It's all gravy. Okay, well, thank you for stopping by and enjoy driving into the Met Gala on that beautiful bike of yours. Oh, it looks like famous pole artist Blaine Petrovia is back. Let's see if I can get an interview this time. Blaine, Blaine, darling. I don't got no fucking time for your shit. Blaine's Netflix watch list sure says to me, someone is not busy. Oh my God, what is this? orange sherbet knitted fantasy i live i love it ugh and a reveal oh excuse me person person i, d I don't think i've met you before is this your first time at the met gala yes hi my name's jesse and uh, you asked if i had ever been to the met gala before and i have never been to anything like this ever before never yeah Thanks for having me. Well, we are so happy to have you here. Now, can you tell me a little bit about who you're wearing? I'm, I love a big stick, so I'm intrigued. This is thrifted. This I made with these giant knitting needles, you know, apocalypse skills. My concept is I am a knitter alone in the world and I have to look glamorous. Um, and also, like, I just wanted to um, honor the masculine in me, and I just really thought that this look could carry a mustache. Well, you have a wonderful evening, and enjoy the Met Gala, darling. Everyone remembers their first time. <laughs> Sorry, got a little carried away thinking about your look and that mustache, <laughs> so nice. I have worn many a plaid skirt. I have worn many a blazer. I have even tried to go topless with chains down my tits. And I have never looked this angelic in my life. This is going on the worst dress list just out of spite, just sheer spite. Oh, hello. <laughs> you look wonderful. Is this your first time at the Met Gala? This is my first and I hope the last mid gala. You know what I mean, no offense. No, I, I don't entirely know what you mean, but I'm glad you're here. Now, what was the inspiration for your look? I'm wearing a Bicala skirt and a Bicala blazer. It's an upcycle from two APC jackets. Very sustainable. I wanted my look to be very ethereal, also very earthy. You know, bringing out the message of love and self-care and care for others. Well, you certainly are bringing a bunch of self-love to me and that piece, love it. Oh, wow. Now here is a conceptual upcycled look. I just love all of the use of flyers as edging on that dress. How wonderful. And a clown face, who can't love it? Oh, it's the queen of the apes herself. Darling, is this your first Met Gala? Yes, remarkably, even though my mother was the fashion editor of the Indianapolis Star, and I've been working off Off-Broadway for years, this is my first Met Gala. Oh, a fashion editor. I see where you get your style. Now tell me a little bit about your look. I'm wearing five pounds of sugar on my head in empty vodka bottles from Dan Aykroyd's distillery. I'm wearing promotional postcards for Theater of the Apes for events scheduled to take place in March, April, and May of 2020. I'm wearing Mickey Mouse gloves that were procured free at Materials for the Arts. I too love Materials for the Arts. That's where I got this fabulous red carpet. Anyway, you enjoy your Met Gala. Oh, look, someone else. It's Tom. He's really hard to get an interview with. Let's see if he'll stop and chat. Tom, Tom. Oh my God. Look at those legs. Holy fuck, they are incredible. And the arms too, and the look. But I mean, those legs. He is clearly someone who either bikes or walks everywhere. What do you think, Lisa? Lisa? Hello, Lisa? Oh, I'm sorry. Did you need me to say something about Tom? Because I am a little distracted. All I can say is 
Bravo, Tom. The view is. Well, it's not just all about that body. I think his use of fabric draping and colors here is also incredibly noteworthy. I'm imagining we're going to be seeing lots of just pieces of fabric come the future. For all of us out here who are quarantining alone, we thank you. We thank you, Tom, for your service. Oh, and it looks like he doesn't have time to stop and chat with us this evening, but I hope he's enjoying his Met Gala. Oh my god, I just love a deconstructed garment number and that face mask. It's giving me Call of Cthulhu realness with a little bit of sheep reference. Oh my god, a reveal. And look at that mug. It is beat to the gods, darling. And the wonderful Adam is here, darling. So good to see you. Now, is this your first time at the Met Gala? This is my first time at the Met Gala. Well, I think you're just looking beautiful. Now, would you tell me a little bit about your concept? Um, I'm wearing my own skin. Function, warmth, and glamour. Uh, my inspiration was just trying to stay warm through this nuclear winter. My skin's fallen off, but I've managed to piece it back on, baby. Oh, well, your skin looks like it's hanging on in all the right places. How divine, darling. You go enjoy this nuclear winter. Oh, look at that walk. It looks like she might have had one or two or three or maybe even four gin martinis before she made it out to the runway. You do you, Grandma. Love your style. Oh, I, I don't think I, I know who you are. Hi, what's your name? My name is Granny Dina Dino and I raise dinosaurs like this one here. You raise dinosaurs? That's so exciting. I'm just so happy to be here. Well, we are so glad to have you here at the Met Gala, and I believe you're here with your your granddaughter. How lovely. And what's your name? Sophie. Is that your full name, Sophie? Sophie Peacock Peacock. Well, Sophie Peacock Peacock, it's lovely to have you here, the youngest guest here at the Met Gala this evening. Now this is a look. Talk about high in carbs, high in quality. Shelton, are you seeing the soft core food porn that is walking the red carpet right now? This look, bon appetit. -y. Talk about non-perishable realness. Look at how the pasta sways around her. Look at how she slurps it up so gracefully. She is incredible. She's an angel. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's marinara. I can't get enough of it. Oh, you know, I think my favorite part is that when I told her to walk a red carpet and she said, honey, I'm stranded in Bali and I don't have any of my clothing and I don't have a red carpet. I was like, well, I don't know, just bathe in pasta sauce. And she, she quite literally did that. I mean, taking concept fashion to the next level here, Grace. I'd break keto for this look. Just kidding, I'm not on a diet. Mm, bro, you are my Italian food hero. I hope after you're done with this red carpet, you made yourself a nice meal. Cause baby, you a snack. Oh my ever loving goodness gracious great bombs of fire this look is the end of my world and i may never recover this floaty dainty poisonous goodness is just it's filling up my lungs and it's causing me to be actually speechless which is something that i can assure you my sixth grade teacher never thought would happen oh my god legendary performer glow job is here this evening Glow job, darling. Way to make an explosive entrance. Now, who are you wearing? Custom glow job. I'm wearing custom glow job. Oh, darling, and what was the concept for your look? I actually... Oh, ladies and gentlemen, she's so beautiful. It sounds like she's gone into slow-mo. It happens with those model celebrity types. Now, glow job, what was the concept behind this look? Oh, 
It looks like she's stuck in slow-mo. Glow job, darling. You go have a lovely time inside and we'll catch you later. <laughs> Try again. Before I wreck the red carpet. Oh, Kelda, darling, it's impossible to ruin a red carpet. And if you do, just turn it into a look. Oh, Kelda, can you stop and give us a little interview? Oh, and it looks like she's ridden off into the evening. You enjoy your Met Gala, Kelda, darling. Oh my god, I'm obsessed. This look looks like it's right off of the cover of Vogue. The way the outfit matches the Forsythia. Way to use Mother Nature in your fashion. Miss Topo Chico herself is here. Darling, is this your first Met Gala? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and who are you wearing? Uh, I'm wearing trash. It's not really a who, it's a what. Certainly are the toast of the town in that look, and I'm gonna have a toast to you later. Now, who is it that you're subtly marketing for this evening? Uh, Tobo Chico. Uh, I own all of it now. Ah. You have, if you want it, you have to go through me, so. Wow, an entrepreneur in these interesting times. Good on you, darling. Enjoy your Met Gala. What am I looking at? <sighs> <clears throat> yeah, um, my, my name should be on the list. I'm sorry, who? Princess Hot Dog. Yeah. Um, Princess Hot Dog, are you a real princess? Because we normally let princesses come to the Met Gala, <laughs> and I don't see your name on the list. Princess, Princess Hot Dog? Hmm, no, no, never heard of her. What do you mean I'm not on the list? Yeah, Princess Hot Dog, I just checked the list again and you're definitely not on it. <laughs> no, what do you mean? I'm sorry, there are more people in line. Do you think you could just, could you move to the side, please? Thank you, Princess Hot Dog. Thank you. Be a fan. Be a fan. Support us. Hashtag support us on Venmo. <sighs> I'm so sorry, you can't come in. <laughs> Some people have brought worse than what you're wearing. I can't let just anyone in. You have to be great, Amy. Sorry, doll. Oh, every year I love me a head to toe black look when it's executed as impeccably as this one is. It screams to me, I am a widow mourning the loss of the life we had before, but fear not, I am here to give you life again with my beauty. Oh, everything from the green locks to the black flowers to the flowing gown. I'm not even mad at the nip slip. I love it, it's impeccable. Thank you, we're amazing, thank you. James, James, come over and say hello. Now, is this your first time at the Met Gala? This is indeed my first time at the Met Gala. Um, I'm thrilled to be here. Everyone looks fierce, despite the conditions. Everyone turned it out, and I'm happy to see it. We love to see it. We do love to see it. You're right. Now, who are you wearing this evening? Um, actually, this gown is Oscar de la Renta. It's a thrifted dress. And when I was trying to stuff my thick body into it today, it ripped. So, um, hence the veil. <laughs> so I don't have a wardrobe malfunction over here, but you know, we're all just doing the best we can. Oh, a little nip slip never hurt nobody. Now tell me a little bit about the concept for your look. Concept for this look? Um, I'm looking at the Queen Runways, Mad Max. Um, but any apocalyptic movie is very minimalist and I can't, I, I started that way with the palette with my face but then it just got bigger and bigger and all of this happened and I am not a minimalist, I am a maximalist, it is what it is. Um, I was also looking at um, Natalie Portman in Star Wars, the prequels, Queen Amidala, realness, anyone? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Princess Amidala, love her, totally catch the reference. Enjoy your evening. Oh my. This look is full on transporting me. I feel like I am on the finest red carpet in the world right now. And the way that dress catches the wind when she moves, just simply beautiful. 
And is her partner Doug wearing a trash bag as a skirt? I think he is, but this look isn't garbage. This look is Bloomingdale's wishes it could, especially when paired with such great boots. Wow, now as a couple, the look really comes together. I love how they subtly complement one another without taking too much attention away from one another. It's truly hard to do pair wear, but I think these two have really figured it out. Congratulations, darlings. Oh look, Samara and her partner Doug are here. Good evening. Now darlings, is this your first time at the Met Gala? Oh no. <laughs> We've been to the Met Gala before. We went last year. They didn't let us in, but we went. Well, I'm glad we let you in this time. Now, who are you wearing? We are wearing Samara Land Couture. Now, what's your attitude towards the apocalypse, darling? Even after the apocalypse, we're going to have to be glamorous. So, might as well use as many shiny things as possible. And what was your concept behind the look? Post peacock elliptic glam. Oh, there's another peacock here this evening. Sophie Peacock Peacock. I hope you catch her inside. Now enjoy your evening. You know, Shelton, I'm a little embarrassed because I once told my ex he could absolutely not wear something he just picked up off the street to a formal event. And here we are with this attendee showing me that I am deeply wrong. Cheers to that look, baby. Oh my God, the hunkiest man in Hollywood is here tonight. Welcome, Dean. Dean, is this your first time at the Met Gala? No, Anna Wintour doesn't invite amateurs. I've been here a few times before. Oh, of course you've been here before, my mistake. Now, what are you wearing? I'm wearing the street because in this day and age, we can't shop anywhere else. Ooh, I love streetwear. And what was the concept of this look? My concept, it's streetwear, obviously. Well, I hope you just keep on living on easy street there, Dean. Enjoy your evening. This look makes me feel like I am going through the car wash of my dreams. Ugh. Dan Daly, oh my God, Dan, it is so good to see you. Now, is this your first Met Gala? Yes, it's my first time. I'm a guest of Christian Siriano, but he doesn't know that yet. I'm sure Christian Siriano will know you're his guest at some point this evening. I'm wearing a self-made piece. It's based off of a theater drop that I built that I then just turned into a dress. So I was thinking that in my apocalypse, it'd be a flood and I just wanted to be a fabulous jellyfish once we all are underwater. Oh, me too. I just love swimming in that big old sea of life. Now you have a good evening. Oh, it looks like famed pole dancing artist and not giver of interviews, Blaine Petrovia is here. Let's see if I can get an interview this time. Blaine. Blaine. I literally told you I'm so busy and I literally don't have time for your shit. What was Blaine possibly gonna say in his interview anyway? We all own that jacket, we know it's from Zara. Why, I just wanna read this look. Truly, it was like you were made for the red carpet. I couldn't agree more. Lady D, so beautiful. The enigmatic Lady D is here. Darling, it's so good to see you. I've been reading all about you. Is this your first time at the Met Gala? Is this my first time at the Met Gala? Yes. And also, no. Oh, such an interesting answer. Now, darling, who are you wearing? The New York Times. Oh, I was recently reviewed for my rap career by the New York Times, and they said I was swoon-worthy. It's probably the highlight of my quarantine. Now, do you have any advice for us? Stay informed. Knowledge is power. Also, recycle. I love to recycle. As you can see by the amount of times I have recycled this wig in this video. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a little terrible and ratty too, which I know it's just, I don't know how to set wigs. Normally I'd bring them to my friend Trisha so she could help me, but I can't see her because it's quarantine. So I'm making the best with what I've got. Okay, people. Well, you have a lovely evening, Lady D. Catch you later. 
Oh, it's Borgie, Borg, 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 theater performer extraordinaire and former New York neo-futurist. Now, Borg, is this your first Met Gala? This is my first time at the Met Gala. I'm honored to be here. And although I'm not as familiar with this ball, I'm very well acquainted with balls in general. <laughs> and tell me, darling, who are you wearing? Tonight, I'm wearing a piece from the house of Dutcher Borg. I, Borgie, was the primary designer, but I was helped in great part by my wonderful assistant, Xavier Desmond. My concept for this piece was Armageddon. I'm armored for the apocalypse, and I am armored with the two most valuable things in a pandemic, pearls and toilet paper. Oh, darling, well then when you're done with the look, can you just come bring it over to mine? I'm out of toilet paper. You go enjoy your evening. To me, this look really is a showstopper. It says, no matter what's happening in the world, I can definitely make fashion out of the things laying around in my house. Now that's really a skill, a skill I think we're all gonna have to learn how to tap into more as this apocalypse continues and we want to be wearing this season. Oh, the wonderful Nancy the Girl of nancythegirl.com, a new website that just currently rebranded and sells fashion and fashion accessories for absolutely everyone of every body type is here this evening. Nancy the Girl, how are you? Thank you so much for having me this evening, Shelton. It's so nice to see you. Uh, yeah, please check out nancythegirl.com. It's in all genders, all sizes, inclusive dress-up shopping environment. And join us on my Instagram for daily fashion challenges. While we're all in lockdown, we might as well have fun getting dressed. Now, how has your apocalypse been going? Uh, quarantine's been going well. Been drinking a lot of um, seltzer, and uh, that's pretty much what I've been doing. Well, you go inside and have a lovely evening, darling. We'll catch you soon. I absolutely love a color block moment. And that mask that she's wearing, how mysterious. Who is that? It could be anyone. I think that's sort of the exciting thing about fashion and the apocalypse. Thanks to all of us wearing face masks all the time, we can really get away with dressing up as our fantasy and no one knowing it's us. Good evening. I'm an apocalypse. And yes, this is my first Met Gala. And I'm very excited for that. But also, if I am here, it is potentially the last ever Met Gala. Oh, I don't think this is the last Met Gala ever. Humans will always find a way to entertain themselves. That's what I find so endearing about us as a species. Now, what was your inspiration? Well, it's a kind of a mashup. It's a um, thrift store chic with some ex-military garments thrown in and um, some styling by, uh, by my sister. Oh, which sister? Plague, famine, war? Armageddon. Oh, I love her work. Oh, she's very good with accessories. She put on these shoulder shields for me. I love a good shoulder moment. You know, I've been trying to lift weights so I can have a better shoulder moment myself, but instead I've just been lifting cookies to my mouth. Now, what was your concept? Our concept for this look was basically an apocalypse. So the end of days, end of Disney, end of Star Wars, end of warfare, end of cheap clothing, the end. But that could also be a beginning. Yes, an apocalypse. I do believe that this is a time of new beginnings. The world will never look like what it was before. And it is up to us, the dreamers and the schemers and the visionaries and the artists, to envision a world that is more beautiful and brave than the one we left behind. If I know anything, it is that I have been so inspired by the ways that I have seen people deal with this trauma over the last six weeks. 
And I know that we are capable of anything when we put our mind to it. Let us recycle the trash of our past civilization to come up with something that is far more beautiful than the world we left behind. This doesn't have to be the end of anything. This can be a bright and bold new beginning. Now, it seems all of our guests have headed inside, so I've put on my mask and I'm getting ready to join them. Thank you so much for joining us this evening at the Met Gala, Apocafabulous, Armed and Dangerous. I've been your host, Shelton Whimsy, reporting live for the Shallow B-Rate Spectacle. Now you go enjoy your evening. And before you do, just a quick thanks to the many people who made tonight possible, including our musicians. Thank you, Blue Velvet, Feathers Wise, Kim Bookbinder, Chris Bigley and Spooky Mountain, and all of the artists who put free music up on the YouTube audio library, which I downloaded. And also thanks to Chris, who did all of my own videography, helped me get into all of my looks and fed me so I wasn't hangry the whole time. And of course, all of you. Thank you so much for all of the incredible work that you did to make this evening such a success, if in nowhere else besides my heart. Now you have a happy and safe quarantine and I'll see you all and give you a real big hug, hopefully soon. Goodbye. And of course, a huge thank you to my co-commentator, Lisa, and our co-host for the evening, Ryan. Now remember, if you're interested in finding out more about how you can support Direct Relief, go to directrelief.org. And links to all the musicians' music can be found below. Check them out. Support them. Yay, artists. I'm just so glamorous.